And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Worldwide Wrestling Network presents Monday Night Melee. I am Remarkable Randall Reigns, and in the commentary booth with me this evening is the one, the only, Mr. Hamrick. And ladies and gentlemen, we do not have a lot of time, so let's welcome Mr. Hamrick to our live broadcast. And as always, the pleasure is all yours, Randy. Uh, we are getting directly to some action. We have got a late live feed coming in here. Uh, we were a little late getting live, and we need to get directly to the ring. And at this moment, as we are introducing what is going to be going on this evening, we have an eight-man, eight-way hustle as we call it here in the World Wide Wrestling Network, and that is going to feature Gorilla Von Cruz, Mark Cantell, Justice Stone, Matt Hudson, Hex Hopkins, Alexander Blacksmith, Zebedee Cunningham, and a newcomer to the World Wide Wrestling Network, Mr. Roy Bacon. Mr. Roy Bacon is also going to be a part of the Brass Knuckles Tournament, so this is going to be an interesting uh, debut and there are a lot of personalities in this eight-way hustle. Um, we've got... Well, there, there are a lot of personalities, and then you have Josh Hutchinson. <laughs> but anyways. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got Alexander Blacksmith, who has made himself a force to be reckoned with here in the World Wide Wrestling Network, Gorilla Von Cruz, who is attempting to do the same in the Young Lions division, and Mark and Tell, who, despite his first loss against Dolph by Devereaux, has been basically undefeated since his debut, except for one loss to the veteran Dog by Devereaux. So, well, this is going to be anybody's match here in this eight-way hustle. Well, you're, you're absolutely right, and that loss that Mark and Dell suffered the dog by Devereaux could have happened to anyone who, I mean, was coming into a new promotion, new territory, and had nerves on their first night on the job and in a new company. And, you know, we, I, I've got to look at what he's done since then rather than that match. And ladies and gentlemen, we are taking this right to the ring. Eight-man action. And we are bringing that the feed is getting ready to come in right now live. We are going to be joining the ringside just as the bell rings with these uh, folks all ready for competition. And here we go. There is an hour long time limit on this hustle. And Mark Cattell is already. And the way that you win an eight-way hustle is by pinfall or submission. So we are in for a long, long match potentially uh, with these individuals. And we see Hex Hopkins, who has allied himself with the chosen of the board, and he has decided to link up with Roy Bacon and Grill Von Cruz going right after Justice Stone, looking for a little bit of payback. Well, I think the story also, outside the ring up there, Alexander Blacksmith and Mark Kintel, the two biggest men in that match are simply going at it. Just, it is an absolute slug slugfest between those two. And look at Matt Hudson taking on Zebedee Cunningham. Right, and that's actually Josh Hudson. Jo uh, Josh Hudson, I apologize. Uh, Josh, Josh Hudson is easily running power slam, putting down Zebedee Cunningham, and wait a minute, that is Mark Cantell and Justice Stone. They are double teaming. It looked like Gorilla Von Cruz temporarily a flatliner, and it looks like some dance partners have changed with Gorilla Von Cruz going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Alexander Blacksmith, and now Justice Stone and Mark Cantell, who had a match a few weeks ago, here on Monday Night Melee. Matt, Matt Hudson has not let up on Zebedee Cunningham in, there, in that ring either. Not at 
at all. They have, they have to keep an eye on that situation. And Hex Hopkins really putting every bit of effort he can into just pummeling Royal Wolton, Royal, Roy Bacon. Oh my God, Gorilla Mike Cruz dropped down across the steel steps. And wait a minute, Stone going for a cover, kick out by Mark Cantel. With authority. Not enough has, damage has been done to this big demon. And oh! Nasty Larry. And Josh Hudson, Zebedee Cunningham, looks like he may have gotten a little bit of offense in, but no. Hudson coming back to the clubbing blow, breaking it up. And Mark and Tell, what a suplex. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Big move, muscle buster by Blacksmith. So all of this is a testament to the destructiveness and the of each of these individuals and how much damage they can take and outlast this gauntlet of seven other men. Mark can't tell with the shoulder block taking down Justice Stone and Mark is just looking a little bit frustrated. Oh my God! Roy Bacon with a springboard at drop kick to the knee takes down Mark Cantell but could not capitalize. Big money power bomb to Zebedee Cunningham. And wait, Justice Stone Cunningham with a cover. Bacon was almost eliminated. Cunningham's out outside the ring. And now Justice Stone, oh my God, spinning hook kick cover. One, two, three, and now we have seven. Roy Bacon has been eliminated. Justice Stone going. You've got to take that's an auspicious debut for the newcomer there. And let's hope he does better in the brass knuckles tournament coming up. Well, he's got out here and he has gotten his name on the card, but going up against seven other men, the, somebody had to be the first one eliminated. Wait a minute, Hex Hopkins. Hex, what the hell, bit wall swatted down from an attempt at a double axe handle. And drop kick puts down Hex Hopkins and Mark and Tell and Zebedee Cunningham. Wait a minute, and Matt Hudson and 70 unlikely allies going up against the big man there and Alexander Blacksmith the headbutt taking down Colonel Von Cruz. It looks like it looks like Hudson's just trying to hit everyone he can there. And that is not the worst strategy to have. Um, but it's also not the smartest. You have to build uh, temporary alliances in matches like this to try to outlast. You're absolutely right. But, I mean, again, we're talking about, well. And it looks like the odd man out is Alexander Blacksmith, and Blacksmith really trying to figure out whom he needs to go against. Hex Hopkins kicks out of that German suplex combination, and Matt Hudson drilling Tiffany Coleman Cunningham down, and it is just a stone and Matt with big clubbing blows. Smart right here. He would let some of these guys pick each other apart and he just take a breather. And it looked like that's what he was going to attempt to do, but now he's inserted himself in every single uh, uh, confrontation. And now it is Blacksmith and Blacksmith and Hopkins. And, oh my God, Gorilla Von Cruz just sat Matt Mark and tail down with a face buster, and that was with authority, and Mark fighting back. And wait a minute, instead of continuing the battle on the outside, Tate goes
goes in for a moment as Gorilla Von Cruz gets his dinners. Gorilla, oh my God, what a judo-like attack by Gorilla Von Cruz putting down Mark Cantel. And back and forth this keeps going. Oh! Modified flatliner. Gorilla Von Cruz came up short in a battle against Benny Banks for the Young Lions Championship. And that frustration has been seen in the locker room. Gorilla Von Cruz uh, tapped out twice in the Young Lions rules to Benny Banks' worst lock. And uh, Gorilla wants to prove that he can stand with the best. Matt Hudson, fall away, no, Samoan drop. I will say, I will say, I have heard Gorilla Von Cruz describe that match as one of the worst experiences he has had since coming to the WWE. And wait a minute, Justice Stone eyeballing Matt Hudson. And again, that spinning hook kick. Cover. One, two, three, and Justice Stone with both of the eliminations in this match. And we are down to six, and Justice really going after Hex Hopkins. And it is Mark Cantell, Justice Stone's Hex Hopkins is in the ring, and Gorilla Von Cruz is still in Zebedee Cunningham, as is Alexander Blacksmith. And Mark Intel just powered through both of these individuals. Mark with an arm ringer, top wrist lock applied. And Justice coming back with shots to the ribs. And Zebedee Cunningham trying to get himself focused to try. Oh my God, Gorilla Von Cruz with the blindside attack. And wait a minute, Blacksmith, th this is just an absolute, this is crazy. It is, it is indeed. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Gorilla Von Cruz with the cover. Two count against Sidney Cunningham. And Hex Hopkins dragging Justice Stone across the top. And we are having some te technical difficulties here. Here we go. And, oh, a big elbow dropping down across Mark Cantel. Exploder suplex takes down Hex Hopkins. Zebedee Cunningham bouncing and guillotine. Six men left. Hex Hopkins, oh, and Colt with a spinning hook kick. Will Justice Stone get his third elimination? Well, Black, Blacksmith is, um, it looks like Blacksmith is trying to set up for Martin Hill there for a moment. One and two. No, Hex Hopkins kicks out. And now Gorilla Von Cruz going after Hex Hopkins. Big chop and side hip lock takedown by Justice Stone. And Mark Cantel, look at the power of Mark Cantel getting Blacksmith up. But Blackson powers out at a drop kick. Oh my God, spinning heel kick to Gorilla Von Cruz. Flying spinning heel. And he needs to capitalize on that. And he, he is showing his youth. Either showing his youth or showing his fatigue in there. Gorilla with a arm ringer, arm breaker, taking down Justin Stone and Hex Hopkins, the wily veteran looking to figure out on how to capitalize. Hex is bleeding, which just adds to the fatigue and exhaustion in a match like this. Well, it also, I mean, I've got- Oh my God! Cutter by Justice Stone. Mark Cantel just having none of it, popping back up, rising from the dead. But it looks, I mean, it's like he's getting busted open the hard way. He has, and who couldn't be, by being dropped on that thin 
protective cover just over concrete. Agreed. And every, bodies are flying everywhere. Mark and Tell with a headbutt sending back Justice Stone. Big chop. Wait a minute, Justice using that striking ability, going after Alexander Blacksmith and Mark Antell. Seventy Cunningham has got Gorilla. Gorilla is up and dropped to the steel. And now Gorilla's busted open, it looks like. And we might have to switch to the black and white filter. <laughs> and Mark Antell has got control of Hex Hopkins. Multiple gut rich suplexes. Justice Stone has Alexander Blacksmith in. And wait a minute, and Zebedee Cunningham is bleeding. I think everybody in this match is bleeding. Quick cover, wait a minute, Mark Antel with the cover. Two, three. Mark Antel with elimination. Ju Alexander Blacksmith with the cover. And now there's four. And now the two biggest men in this match are going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Slugfest and a, oh, what a spine buster. And Blacksmith needs to get a cover right here. But I think, well, no, he's picking him back up then. I think that was a bad part of Blacksmith. Blacksmith trying to work the shoulder of Mark Cantell and Carilla Von Cruz trying to outlast 70 Cunningham and oh my god just Blacksmith all of the force dropping down on Mark Cantell and look but at you can, you, can, you can tell the fatigue is sitting in on him there he, and looks like he was about to go for a cover but he was too tired and all of these men they have battled for basically nearly 15 minutes big shoulder block Sidestepped. And, and at this point, they're all wait, busted open. Wait a minute. So. Roll through. Look at the power of Marquettel. And the bridge. One, two, kick out. Grovon Cruz really needs to get this back into the ring. But Zebby Code Cunningham proving to be sly and slippery. Big German suplex. A gut wrench suplex, I apologize. And wait a minute, look at Gorilla. On the outside, wait a, oh my god. Dropping from the military press position into an uppercut. Zebedee Cunningham, that, that's got to be it. Gorilla needs to cover. And just... The frustration on the part of Gorilla Von Cruz. Wait, what the hell? What the hell? No, look at Blacksmith. Blacksmith, power bomb, and the weight just shook. But look at Gorilla. One, two, three. Uh, oh my God. Gorilla just got <laughs> out. And Mark and Tail doing the smart thing, rolling to the outside. Avoiding the pin, and Gorilla Von Cruz is standing tall. And now Gorilla going to the outside to face down Alexander Blacksmith. Mark Antell and Zebby Cunningham recovering on the outside, on the outside, on the outside. And Gorilla hesitated for just a minute. And now he is in there with these gigantic forms of life. Just... And wait a minute. Oh my god. Blacksmith bridging. One, two, no. Cunningham sending Cantel on the outside. And dropkick. And wait a minute, wait a minute, double underhook pile driver, Zebby Cunningham, swatted down, picked up, and whoa, what a combination. Grilled on Truce kicks out. 
of that double underhook pile driver. And now it is Gorilla and Blacksmith, toe to toe, eye to eye. And Gorilla is down to one knee and up and big power pop. And that was, that was like watching Van Vader drop a power pop. Gave me flashbacks and goosebumps. Cunningham trying to work on Mark Cantel. Mark with a forearm shot. Like in a minute. Wait a minute. Camel clutch. Applied and broken. And now, quick cover and wait a minute. Leveraging his weight and Earl Von Cruz able to kick out. Forearm shot. And it, whoa, headbutt. And oh my God, went for the spirit of DDT. Blacksmith in control. And we might see another one of those big Tower of Doom power bombs. And that, look, no, 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 oh my God, look at this. They don't call the Flying Giant for nothing. And look at this triangle choke to Zebedee Cunningham. Zebedee breaks the, with a power bomb. But he may have heard himself breaking it because we need to point that big man up a little bit. And front face lock applied by Mark Cantel. Mark, oh my God, Samoan drop. That's a six foot drop and following it up with a big splash. That may have been more than a six foot drop there. And kick to the gut, misses, take down. And Zebedee Cunningham going to try to take the leg of Mark Cantel. And there's the great thought. Great, but Cantel able to grab the ropes. Mark Cantel has lost a lot of blood. Big shot right to the chest. DDT puts down Cunningham. You've got to think all of these men have been bleeding for a good, what, five, six minutes? At least. It's the war, yeah. And wait a minute, I think we're going to get a body splash. Bye. Oh my God. All the weight right on that apron. And Mark has got Semi Cunningham up. Perched and oh my god! Crucifix power bomb. Whipped into the rope, uh, into the corner. Zebney Cunningham fighting back. Mark Cantel boxing the ears into the corner. And wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh my god, he decapitated it. And now it is Mark Cantel who is left in the ring. And who is he targeting? He's going after Gorilla Von Cruz. Sensing that Gorilla Von Cruz is the weakest link. And wait, no, wait a minute. Good God Almighty! Good! If anyone wondered why Alexander Blacksmith is called the Flying Giant, that ought to give you an answer right there. He just dropped an elbow off of the top rope to the floor, and it is these two monsters that are destroying Gorilla Von Cruz. And now, figure four in a leg breaker. Zebedee Cunningham attempting to get himself put back together, and these guys are exchanging forearm shots like they're Pokemon cards. And now we are back, Mark and Tell. As big as your Pokemon collector, Randy. And Zebedee Cunningham able to stop this onslaught from Mark Cantel. Mark. Uh, he's not stopped it for that long. 
Yeah, but he was able to uh, cause a breather for just a moment. And look at this. Oh, my God. Good God Almighty. Spear. Spear by Gorilla Von Cruz. And he capitalized on it, though. No deacon. At, at, they are throwing everything at each other. And this is just the opening match of Monday Night Melee. Big super kick right to the back of the head. Rings the bell in the opposite direction. But he's not going for pins here. None of these guys are going for pins at this point. And Mark Cantel pulling up and a power bomb right into the corner. Sammy Cunningham rolls out. Wait a minute, are we gonna see that again? Yes, this time into the ropes. And yet, nobody is going for pins here. Mark, oh my God. He is kicked. Cantel finally, Cantel finally going for a pin on Blacksmith. Good Lord. And now it is Mark Cantel, Gorilla Von Cruz and Sammy Cunningham. Mark is the biggest man in the match. He has Two pinfall eliminations. No, one pinfall elimination. Grilla Von Cruz. Buckle Bomb! And Gorilla going for the cover. Looking to eliminate Mark Antel. And no! Almost had him. And in this business, almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Indeed it does. And Gorilla, this time attempting to kick Cantel's head off. And I think that Mark Cantel actually was taunting Gorilla Von Cruz with that kick to Alexander Blacksmith's head. Yes, you may be right there. And was Blacksmith actually eliminated then? Yes, Blacksmith has been eliminated, and he is recovering on the outside. Sammy Cunningham and is a house of fire coming back more annoying than Leo Rush backstage and coming oh big clothesline taking down group more annoying than that man in general but I digress and wait a minute Cunningham dropping Gorilla across the apron Mark Intel recovering and will Zebedee Cunningham be able to capitalize? Will it be the final two, Zebedee Cunningham and Mark Cantell? Zebedee. The problem that Zebedee and Gorilla have, have had in this match is they are not going for pins on opponents. That is true. They are not capitalizing on big moves in big moments. And Gorilla Von Cruz staring down wait a minute he's got him linked up power bomb sit out power bomb on the cover one two three and now it is gorilla and the monster and von cruz wisely rolls to the outside but at this point it's not going to do him any good well it could give him a respite but it not, doesn't look like not, it is because he is, Cantel is in control. Yeah, not with Cantel on him, I mean. And look at the blood pouring down the face of both these men. They look like Nick Aldis at the Crockett Cup. And Crucifix powerbomb. And no, 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 oh my. Oh my God, I think he hit the bottom turnbuckle. I think he hit all, I think he hit more than just the bottom there. Mark Antel going for the cover. One, two, three. Has been eliminated. And what a match. What a, what match. Absolutely incredible. Outlasting 
eight other men. And this has got to put him on the map. What an incredible match. It does. I mean, it, in theory, it definitely does. We'll see what happens going forward with this big man. And ladies and gentlemen, that was just our opening match. Stay tuned for more Worldwide Wrestling Network action. Philadelphia Flyers jerseys 
if need be. Any, I mean, it's the speed. Anyway, uh, the question I've got, and, and the bigger question on my mind, and out there is KJP and Chase Kearney. KJP in the Brass Knuckles Tournament. As will do Rag Jones. And another thing to note on this is there's somebody missing from the the Empire of Pain tonight. Uh, one Caesarian who's got an upset victory over Jada Storm recently. Yes. Very true. And we will see Team Caesarian later this evening against Liberty, Washington. And here come the number one contenders for the Tag Team Championships and these guys are a hard hitting in your face team. And but not a lot of sense to them. <laughs> well, they are that's difficult to say. There is a method in how they go about things and, that, and there was a team that may need the guidance of a it could be the Bhutan Bulldogs, simply, but with their winning streak, who are they going to listen to? Well, I was going to say, I would just, I will, I will agree with you, but I would also say what manager would want to try to give these guys any sort of direction as generally senseless as they come off as being. But I didn't know. And here we have an outright brawl to start out this Tornado Tag match. It is a three-way dance, which means it ends by pinfall uh, or submission. And look at Boot Dog Jim with that running kick right to the rear of, of James Kearney. And Boot Dog Bill going toe one-on-one -on -one with Duke. Brad Jones, Jones capitalizing with a neck break. And Aiden Davis is going toe to toe with KJ Payne and just bringing it on the outside. This is one minute of action in this three way dance. What a running knee! And Aiden Davis with that guillotine leg drop on the KJ Payne. Aiden Davis, one of the newest members of our Young Lions division trying to shake off some of that boxing background and become more of a finely tuned professional wrestler and he is getting that uh, daily big old punch sending out. But you've got to think that that boxing background is definitely helping him out. Yes, the match. Especially for the couple of, of bosses like the Bulldog Bulldogs. The speed in his boxing prowess with his fast hands definitely gives him an advantage until the Bulldogs actually get a grapple hold. And wait a minute, did, did James Kearney just step in front of that punch for Durag Jones? I, I, if he did, it wasn't on purpose and he's probably regretting it. Aiden Davis dropping down, KJ Payne, and here comes Boondog uh, Jim. Big, oh look at combination shoulder block and spear. And now the Boondogs just picking their target. Aiden Davis <laughs> slammed into the corner and Boondogs Taking control. Mongolian shot by James Kearney. And I think Kearney's well, Kearney's got to stay back to the line with the Bulldogs. He certainly does. Big old super kick. 
big old super kick taking down Boondog uh, Bill. And the last Boondog is in. And look at that uncomfortable position that Aiden Davis was in. Quick cover by, Kate, by James Kearney. And the Boondogs. The Boondog, one of the Boondogs has been eliminated. They still have a chance. Big look at that slam. And Durag Jones attempting to go for the wave check. Boondog Bill attempting to avenge the elimination of Boondog Jim. This, this is, by all accounts, this is a handicap match. So if, if, if any of these teams will work together against uh, the West Boondog, hey, they should go for it. And it looks like we are getting some of that right now, even though KJ Payton and Aiden Davis are tearing each other apart. And look at this. What, oh my God, what a double leg takedown, followed up by palm strikes right to the face of Durag Jones. And wait a minute, Boondog Jim coming back fighting. And this is, this match is difficult to call, so much going on. Big single, uh, single shoulder. Wait a minute, taking him up. What a Uranagi! That is, that was uh, something to behold right there. And Durag pulling a through that gut rich power bomb. And Durag Jones is standing tall against the Empire of Pain. And James Kearney, wait, quick cover by Boondog Jim. One this, this kick out by Boondog Bill, I'm sorry. The question was tactics, and I was talking about with the Boondog. Oh, with look, headlock followed by a super kick. These guys are, wait a minute, attempting to get that clover lead. And just did not work. And now it is a big old stomp. What the heck? Good God almighty. Just stomping the life out of Boondog Bill. And Aiden Davis turning his attentions back to KJ Payne. And James Kearney with that figure four leg breaker. And I think, I think Durag's out on his, uh, he's out out there. Uh, he is not moving, he's barely moving. He's just getting his dinners right now. He's starting to. I and, but they are, these, these teams working together and against each other against the, oh my God, there's that big right hand. Super kick connects, two, three, and now it is Philly's most wanted and the Empire of Pain on a level playing field. And I, I think if the Empire of Pain will just stop tonight, they ought to be reconsidered. Wave check, wave check. What the hell? Why did Aiden Davis just do that? Oh my god! 
running knee strike right into Rag Jones. Aiden Davis throwing hands on James Kirk. Right hand isolating the off the ropes. The only thing I can Big running punch. The only thing I can think of is maybe useful ego on his part. He wanted to pinfall on James Curry. But that's not how these guys have worked together before. It, it's very strange. I, it is strange, but it's like we were saying earlier. These two guys, particularly Aiden Davis, has stated he wants to, to prove himself as a singles competitor. Durag has been pretty vocal about it. Oh, and Durag is getting cut down. Aiden Davis with a big left hand, not capitalizing. Now Aiden Davis is alone with the Empire of Pain. <clears throat> Ducks and misses that by a hair, that spinning hook kick. There's, a, there's been a couple of misses that I, I think Aiden Davis has dodged it just by pure luck. Yeah, more luck than skill. Big cross body though. And then wailing on KJ Payne. Davis has his eyes on James Kearney, trying to figure out what he needs to do to put him down, and throwing jabs, and a big right hand. Stomping weight, cover. One, two, kick out. And he should have covered instead of stomped. I agree, I agree. And now they are working, working together, but Kearney is back on his feet. Durag Jones with the arm drag takedown, the Urban Gladiator. And Aiden Davis is about to pop Durag again right there. And trying to front face right. like a fly, big wrong shot. And Durag Jones. Whoa, digging deep with that power slam. And now it might be time for a wave check. He's got it linked up, synced up, wave check. And no, too close to the ropes. Going for that gut rich power bomb to put down Kearney. Oh my God. Aiden Davis popping off for the fastball punch. And Kearney and whoa, up and down. up James Kearney got him lit, locked up in that modified Clover League shout out to his friends over at Patty's Pub in Philadelphia apparently so yeah I, that Clover League didn't bring many looks this evening big oh my god well Patty's Pub rarely brings anybody's luck fair enough fair enough wait a minute going for a Rings of Saturn on Kearney, broke up. But we are seeing a side of Durag Jones that we hadn't seen before. This uh, hit at submission at submissions. And like we've said before, uh, inspired by William Regal. And wait a minute, oh, Davis taken down. KJ Payne, and it is Philadelphia's most wanted, still standing. One, two, kick out. And we have spoken about the resiliency of the Empire of Payne before. We have indeed. And these guys do not know when to quit, do not know when to give up. And Joe goes to the outside. And, and I, I argue that this might be due to sort of language barrier, language issue, but apparently English is their native language. Anyway. And Aiden Davis had by the ear and a big right hand. Referee, one, two, and it's broken up. James Kearney makes the save. Davis again coming in with those strikes. Durag 
Aaron Jones stomping away on a potential adversary in the Brass Knuckles tournament, James Kearney, a KJ Payne. Payne locked in to those no, rings of Saturn. No, Kearney's, Kearney's the one, it's Kearney with the one that's betting in the Brass Knuckles tournament there, not KJ. No, KJ is, KJ's in the Brass Knuckles. Okay, well, I just have to be, uh, it's a bit of a confusing which one of them is going to be it. I mean, and the, wait a minute, these guys, all of them, are just laying in everything they can. And looks like big punch again. Combination into that gut breaker. Two count. And Durat goes out of frustration, dropping that big running forearm smash. Curry with a super kick. And that sends Aiden Davis for the loop. And it's just Durag Jones, Aiden Davis looks unconscious after that super kick. Over the head, German suplex. And now it is Payne and Jones. Durag gets the knees up. And forearm shot by Payne. And a dragon twist. And the big, biggest thing coming out of this thus far is the number one contenders for the tag belt have been eliminated first. Yes, taken out first by the combined efforts of Philly's Most Wanted and the Empire of Pain. And, it, and it, since then, neither team has been able to get a firm upper hand on one another, and we have under five minutes left in this match. And Duran Jones alternating shots. Oh, wait a minute, right to the spine, following it up with a clothesline. And Durag, as both of the Empire of Pain stand, and Aiden Davis really needs to, oh wait, wait check, but super kick to Davis. One, two, three. It is all James Kearney. Wait a minute. Kearney with these multiple firemen's carry slams to Aiden Davis. And Durag Jones was right there, able to help his tag team partner. But it is Kearney and Jones. But I was gonna say at this point, Kearney, Kearney's the one that's gonna be needing some help here. And a big gut buster. We've got less than three minutes. Right hands are flying through Rag Jones. Trying to take, wait, wait, walking to the steel. And just the fatigue sets in. Kearney with the jawbreaker to Trump. And Jones in the ring. Kearney looking like he's wasting a little bit of time. Davis getting himself together. Kearney, he's going for a springboard shot. And it's at springboard knee. And Aiden Davis is collecting himself. Kearney's the only one in this ring. Davis still on the outside, looking a little glazed over. Almost like a giant Krispy Kreme donut. Just hey now. out of, what the heck? We know, we, we know you love donuts, Randy, but <laughs> that is not the way to look at the, at the people working for this company. And Jones sends in Kearney. And wait a minute, what the heck? Look at that neck break. And we've got one minute and <coughs> 55 seconds. 
Jones trying to bring this match home. Picks up. Belly to belly suplex. And Aiden, Aiden Davis is just walking there. I don't know what's going on with Aiden Davis. Nor do I. He better, he better hope Duprat either finishes this or the time run down. I mean. And big thrusting spine buster by Duprat Jones. Almost looking like Ron Simmons there with that up and down. And now, wait a minute, look at this. An Indian death lock along with the arms trapped. Durag Jones and Kearney going toe to toe here. Big gut kick, takes it down with the left hand. 50 I, I, seconds left in this match. I'm saying, but I think, I think the timer's going to explode like it is. If Durag doesn't finish him off, it, this match is going to be a draw. 40 seconds left. Cover. One, two, and kick out. Aiden Davis gets in. Finally getting in. 29 seconds. That big right, looks like he's going for that right hand. Go for the cover. One, two, kick out. 15 seconds. This, this is gonna want it to draw, Brandy. I, this is gonna want it to draw, I have a feeling. And Durag Jones trying to finish this. Double leg take down by Kearney and it's a draw. And ladies and gentlemen, due to the fact that it is a draw, we will have the, we will have Philadelphia's Most Wanted versus the Empire of Pay, the rematch on Cyclone Saturday night. Knuckles Rules match featuring Bully Demas and the debuting Glenn Bradner. Now, uh, Bully Demas has been conspicuous by his absence over the last couple of weeks, uh, especially since Bully has been tapped as one of the chosen of the board. In fact, he has been named as the board's protected asset in the Brass Knuckles tournament. Meaning that, and, and Bully is looking to get some gold via the Brass Knuckles tournament, and he is going to try to show off some of his extreme and hardcore skill here tonight in this Brass Knuckles Rules match. But, poor Glenn Bradner uh, being signed to a Worldwide Wrestling Network contract and then having to well, square I mean, off against... Well, my, my, my understanding, my understanding, I don't know if we're going to say completely for Glenn Bradner. Glenn, after signing his contract, he said he would, he was willing to work any match against anybody on the roster. He didn't, he wasn't going to be particular about who. He wanted the opportunity he wanted a chat he wanted the challenge he more importantly wanted the opportunity and i am not going to feel bad for anyone who is willing to go out there and take the opportunities that were presented to them and ladies and gentlemen that, that being said glenn bradner versus bully demas is up next and we are going to be taking this right to ringside here on Monday Night Melee, third match of the evening. So far, we've had some incredible matches with victories over with Mark Antel and a draw in that three-way tag team match leading to Cyclone Saturday Night on uh, uh, Saturday. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. And 
Lynn Radner coming out making his Worldwide Wrestling Network debut. Little bit of smoke and uh, it does more than a little bit of smoke right there. And Radner wanting to be an inspiration here. Coming out. And I, I guess we felt like we needed to add spice this guy up a little bit with some pyro. Build him up some, especially here in his debut. I, you know, I, the only thing I'm going to say on it is, I mean, the guy's taking this kind of a chance, we've got to do something nice for him. And Lynn Bradner is going to be facing off against Bully Demas, who is a champion and has been a champion in other digital wrestling promotions. And tonight... Um, I, I just saw what was on the back of his jacket there. What is that on his back? I think it's some kind of giant tramp stamp. It looks like it. From Birmingham, England. Look, Bully Demas coming out. I saw the Michigan in the back of the jacket there. And I automatically feel three times sorry for the Lynn Render. Or maybe it's sorry for the Lynn Render. Because I can't get it by the Michigan in the back of the jacket. Well, it all depends on what part of Michigan they are. I'm going to get my empty sky. You may be correct, but just one I can do and here comes the bully from the UK, Bully Demas, one-fifth of the chosen of the Ford team that has been hand-picked by Bruiser Marco. And you will know. People, I mean, seconds, ringside seconds, managers, whatever, tag team partners are not allowed. Well, at least they are not allowed uh, in uh, the confines of being there at ringside constantly. These matches yes. are going to be violent exactly. enough without interruptions from exactly. uh, outside influences. And Brad Corner pushed around a little bit by the bully and swatted down. And bully laying into Glenn Bradner. And big power bomb by the bully. And bully Demas just laying, wait a minute, wait a minute. Drop down DDT by Glenn Bradner and Bra wait a minute waste lot denied and Irish whip by oh and he catches it with that knuckle duster there and Bradner really showing a little bit of spirit against the bully well, but bully I mean, takes it down what a single leg takedown He's trying to and prove he's, he's worthy of the opportunity he's been given here. And forearm shot by Demas. Demas now sending Bradner to the outside. To the outside, to the outside, to the outside. And a thrust kick. And wait a minute, cover. One kick out by Bradner. And in Brass Knuckles matches, you can win by knockout, pin, or submission. Falls count anywhere, no time limit. All weapons are legal. And as we are seeing, Bully Demas, wait, good God. Stiff right hand after two judo takedowns. And Bradner fighting back as best as he can 
but a leg sweep by the bully. And now bully locking in an Achilles tendon lock. Could this be a submission? Could this be, no. Bradner fights back with a stiff kick right to the head of Bully Deets. Bully catches the leg of the, wait a minute, doesn't catch that second one. And I, I, I would say that, that, that Bradley, Brad, why do they get back in the ring, get stay back in the ring, but. Bradner, Brad, his name Brad, is Bradner. Lynn Bradner. Lynn look, Bradner. Look at the format. Brad, um, Well, you, you called him Bradley Gardner earlier, so, I mean... And you could have easily called me out and say, look at the format. And now this I, brawl is going into the crowd, but denied by Glenn Bradner. And wait a minute, Bully, well, with a sharp Bully kick, makes... sends him back over. And now this is a crowd brawl in earnest. And the big Bully from Brighton is just fighting and taking out Glenn Bradner. And this is a brawl. This is a brawl, and I, and I this, don't think you were expecting anything less than that so tonight. And this is absolutely going everywhere. Knee to the gut, and then Demas walks and shifts position. Bradner, oh, right to the side. Right in front of this crowd here. And now we are almost to our stage position where there are some openings and there's just not enough room for a pinfall. And wait a minute, breaking the neck and Bradner just going blow for blow with the big bully here. Well, he, he's trying to, and we'll see how long he can keep this up. Though, I mean. And just exchanging these punches and these clubbing blows and these knee strikes. I mean, they are going. I mean, now which way are they going? They're going the opposite direction. They're headed towards the, no, not quite cut off by the bully. Forearm shot by Demas, and Demas rocks Bradner, but Bradner just, I mean, this is going, this is crazy. And guys, we saw on Cyclone Saturday night a taste of some of the competitors who are in the Brass Knuckles Tournament. And this is a typical of the kind of action that we might see in said Brass Knuckles Tournament. I mean, this is, and oh my God. And pulling and the head. I know there's some equipment, there's some equipment not far from the direction they were heading a moment ago. No, there, there is a place, there is some, that is an open area and there are, there they are, there's chairs, there's electrical equipment, there's a trash can. I mean, this is, this could get very bad very quickly. Big right hand sends Bradner back into that area. Wait a minute, neck breaker. And this is absolute, what a big, whoa. Swinging full Nelson slam on the concrete. Cover. One, two, kick out. That was probably the foolish, the most foolish thing Clinton could have done right there. And here comes Bully measuring. He's got, wait a minute. Bradner slips out. Sends Bully into the electrical equipment, slamming his head down. And wait a minute, attempting something, but the Bully reverses it right on the edge of the trash can. Good God Almighty. <coughs> Again. Glenn Bradner.
good God Almighty! Two, three! to uh, show herself as a potential threat than to take on a woman who has held both of those titles, Liberty Washington. Well, I, I will say one better, slightly better way, although I don't disagree with your assessment there, there is a match that will be an exclusive <coughs> on the uh on the website uh that will be uploaded very soon <coughs> a match between Jada Storm and Kelly Kazarian that was taped for Glow uh but there were some technical issues with the other matches taped and uh we are basically going to deliver that match as is uh we I mean, it, it was uh, a, a very stunning match, to say the least. It was a rematch of them two from the Mildred Burke Classic. One, I am sure Jada Storm does not want us showing. And let's go ahead and get to Liberty Washington versus Kelly Kazarian as our fourth match of the evening. Monday Night Melee here on the World Wide Wrestling Network. And here comes Liberty Washington, one of the most decorated talents in the World Wide Wrestling Chicago, Network. Illinois, Inspired by her grandmother, who was an activist throughout the 50s and the 60s. I, 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 and wasn't her, uh, wasn't her grandmother named Martha? I don't know what you're getting at. Martha Washington. Will you stop? Never mind. And Liberty, a track star in Chicago, Illinois, at her high school, and 
turned that pro athletic talent into a professional wrestling career. And now, she has held um, the Southern Premier Women's Championship. She has held the Glow Crown, and she has held the Worldwide Wrestling Network Women's Championship twice. A decorated champion going and up against Kelly Kazarian from Brisbane, here Australia. This evening. Kelly, a looking to make herself a contender and is doing so by going up against some of the most decorated talents in digital wrestling. Referee calls for the bell and Liberty Washington links up with Kelly Kazarian. Side headlock applied, dug in deep. That is locked in by Liberty Washington side. Headlock takeover and a punch to even and that one, up. One thing, one thing that can be said on this situation. Wait, Liberty wait, 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 wait. Good God, oh, look at the power of Kelly Kazarian. I was going to say, Liberty has a wrestling skill advantage over Kelly Kazarian, but we just saw Kelly Kazarian definitely seems to have a power advantage over Liberty Washington. I mean, caught her in the middle of that hurricane rana and then finishes it off with a head scissors. A very complete athlete is Kelly Kazarian. Swinging neck breaker to Liberty. And Kelly caught with a European uppercut. And wait a instant, Gurry brings the ears of Kelly. But Kelly, Kelly just right, wait right a, oh! Liberty's jaw there. Missing He's with that good. European uppercut and then pop up Samoan drop by they're, Liberty Washington. They're basically, they're basically just exchanging shots here. And I mean, it's huge shots. Big shots by both women and now Kelly Kazarian taking it to the outside to the outside to the outside and I think she may be she may have done that to get herself a little distance to wait a minute things. Liberty Washington taking showing umbrage and showing her veteran status there and again up look at that with the backbreaker for the fireman's carry position going for the cover one kick out by Kazarian with authority. And still working the back is Liberty. Irish whip sending a forearm shot fully formed right to the face of Kelly Kazarian following up by stomps and now working the arm of the Aussie feet. Which may not be a bad idea considering that Kelly does like throwing punches in that ring. And a big corkscrew elbow nails the jaw of Kelly Kazarian and it gets a two count. Liberty Washington, a grappler, technical wrestler who utilizes both speed and agility in her matches and this is something that she has added very recently to her repertoire that for better or for better or worse every time i see her do this i i've got to wonder if she's making a mistake and sometimes it pays off and sometimes it doesn't but it connects big coast to coast but she still takes a lot of damage for herself on that move and pulling Kelly Kazarian back into the middle of the ring. Will this be the victory? One, two, kick out by Kelly.
And Liberty Washington used her latest technique. And was it enough to put down Kazarian? Karkarana connects this time. And now Kazarian rolls to the outside to get a bit of a breather as Liberty Washington fires up this crowd. Kelly brings it back into the ring. And Liberty with the hot shot. And, and that's the second time this oh. match done something like that. Kelly's walked right into it. Kelly just really getting her uh, understanding of this business and while that hot shot isn't the most respectable maneuver it is completely legal and, and oh right. wait a minute roundhouse and, missed steps out of the way yoshi tonic and i'm and kelly is still fairly new to this business i mean she's been in, i think under uh Definitely under two years, barely over a year, it's my understanding. Correctly. And again, that corkscrew elbow putting down the Aussie Phoenix. And this time, when she burns down, she may not rise again. And you, you are correct on that. Two and a kick out. And how much of that was instinct? How much of that was energy and power left over we do not know but wait a minute big backbreaker and now kelly attempting to get the fans behind her irish or whip or at least trying to rally herself here wait a minute wait a minute this might be it the american suplex roll through german and the bridge one, two, kick out! Liberty couldn't hold her there. Good God Almighty! Kelly Kazarian just kicked out of that fantastic that maneuver. Is, that move that, that has won Liberty Washington title previously in her career. Yes! And now Liberty working the legs of Kelly Kazarian, stomping away on the arms. And a big knee drop. Liberty not standing still. And, and she really can't afford to in this match, I don't think. And a surfboard of a type working the back and the shoulders and the arms of Kelly Kazarian. Kelly comes back with, wait a minute, good God, tossing. Liberty Washington across the ring. Kelly, what the hell? Wait a minute. Big running knee by Kelly Kazarian. Cover. One, two, wait. Barely getting the shoulder up. <coughs> and now Kelly waits patiently for Liberty. Liberty is up, and oh my god, Fireman's Carry DDT. Cover, two, three, and Kelly Kazarian. Kelly Kazarian with the victory over Liberty Washington. And, and that, I mean, I, you would want to call that an upset, but given what we've seen recently, I, I gotta think that, that is the, the beginning of things to come for Kelly Kazarian. And Kelly Kazarian on an upward path here in the World Wide Wrestling Network here in the women's division. Here is your winner, Kelly Kazarian. And along with her allies, the Empire of Pain, KJ Payne and James Kearney, things look like a solid future for all three of those members. And 
ladies and gentlemen, what a fantastic women's match between Kelly Katerian. Congratulations, Kelly, on that victory over Liberty Washington. And that brings us to our main event. That is up next. Tonight we have Sniper versus Shining Simon Sullivan in a singles match, but Sniper is being backed up by MC Adams. Now we have seen a lot of Sniper over the course of several weeks attacking Ken Zander, uh, aiding in the attack of Shining Simon Sullivan. This is Sniper's first match here on the World Wide Wrestling Network. And given Sniper's history, we cannot really say, is this a uh, an alliance between MC Adams as it appears or is this a relationship of convenience? Sniper identifies himself as a mercenary, as a hitman of sorts here in digital wrestling. And is he just allying himself with MC Adams because of ideology? Is this a paycheck from MC Adams? Or is he working for someone else? It, or does it matter? Or does it matter? I mean, if you have them, you have two men who both, sure, they have some relatable content in their ideologies, but the one underlying factor is the man who is opposite them tonight, and that is Shining Simon Sullivan, who, I mean, yes, he's been the standard bearer as of late for the Worldwide Wrestling Network, but we can't sit there and overlook uh, just what this man's history has been. And, and, and he's he's put the target on himself. No, he's not at, he's not, you know, got anyone else to, to blame him or credit or whatever for the target that he has put on himself. And if Snipe, you know, wants to make a name for himself in the, the World Wide Wrestling Network, he's going to go for the guy with the largest target, as any sensible businessman would. But at the same time, all of this is all happening at a very convenient time for Bruiser Barco and the Chosen of the Board. Uh, Bruiser Barco has made it known that he is not happy with Shining Simon Sullivan uh, and his actions even from a year, nearly a year ago at Battle Bowl, turning down his offer uh, to be the man, to basically be uh, Barco's champion. And this is all fallout or could be potential fallout for Shining and, and Simon you, Sullivan. You said exactly right there, could be. There is no direct evidence that Sniper is working for Bruiser Barco. He, nobody has come out and said he is working for MC Adams. He could simply have a similar goal in mind that he wants his name in the title picture instead of Shining Simon Sullivan. And with that being said, we're going to take this to ringside and Sniper coming out first. The lights drop and we've got strobe lights going. And Sniper will be with MC Adams. MC Adams brutally assaulted Shining Simon Sullivan after a tag match where they were partners. 
on Monday Night Melee, a few weeks ago, I Cyber brought in the chair, and basically, after the victory over the Chosen of the Lord, MC Adams laid into Shiny Simon Sullivan with that steel chair. You've got to think that Sullivan is still recovering from those brutal shots delivered by MC Adams. Well, no, he's definitely, uh, probably still tender there, but it's not, it's not shining by Sullivan. It is, you know, if he has any degree of concept of what he claims, then he's good enough to be tonight. And this, once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Sniper's Worldwide Wrestling Network debut. First match, and he is main event on the card against a former World Heavyweight Champion. Well, he's not just a former World Heavyweight Champion. He was a collector about a year ago. Holding nearly every idol in this and, and yes, that is very true. Holding every major title. And shining Simon Sullivan coming out, basking in the light, and looking to go toe to toe with Sniper, who aided in an assault. And we also have to ask this question why isn't Sullivan? going up against MC Adams. Why isn't it Adams versus Sniper? Is, did MC Adams throw Sniper uh, in front of Shining Simon Sullivan to protect himself? I, you know, I, the only thing I can say there is who brought the chair into the ring? Sniper. I mean, that's exactly. the... Exactly, and, and, you know, I think, I think Sullivan's mindset might be, let's get the, let's get the guy who brought the chair in, and then get the guy who used it. And here we go. Shining Simon Sullivan versus Sniper, 20 minutes on the clock. And Sniper starting things out with that gut kick. Brain Buster already working. The potential injury of Shining Simon Sullivan as Sullivan fighting back, sending... Oh my God, what a collision. Catching the leg, dropping the elbow, and good God. I would have never... Good, great. Back and forth. Move for move. Sniper again lifting up and again. Working the head. And a knee drop right across the chin and neck. And this assault. Wait a minute. Matt Sullivan catching the leg. Say, say what you will about his tactics. Sniper is behave, is working very intelligently. I, I mean, it's as any good technical wrestler would and working a body part, staying on that body part as much as he can. And that, that is very true. Uh, you getting all of these shots to Michael. And, oh my God, lifting him up with that elevated flatliner. One, two, kick out by Sullivan. But I mean, even though, you know, the, the uh, chair attack was on his ribs uh, as much as it was anywhere else. Sniper and again, moves that focus on the head. Again, one more time to kick out. You've got to ask yourself how and, much Sullivan can take and of that. Offense. That pump handle reverse STO. That is the headshot by Sniper, and he's continuing this assault. Sullivan finally able to fight back, but I don't know how much more he can take. He's got that top wrist lock -like applied, but Sniper creating that distance. Big Irish whip and a drop kick. Sullivan in danger here. Sniper 
Wait a minute, Sniper's got the legs up. Sullivan able to kick out even with the extra leverage. And honestly, and I think that extra leverage there may have helped him with the kick out. Potentially. Because they put Sniper off balance. It had Sniper off balance. He didn't get the leverage fully in there. Now Sniper lifting up Sullivan, dropping him down. Shades of Devon Dudley with the severe skull trauma. And again, elevated, flat one. And I think that one busted him open. And look at the fatigue. Cover, one, two, but no, Sullivan gets the arm up. And you've got to think that was due to the to him not really being covered for that pin. And Sullivan busted wide open by Sniper. And now going after the legs, trying to keep Sullivan from utilizing his speed and agility in his top rope maneuvers, which he hasn't even been able to get to because of this relentless assault by Sniper here. Sullivan. Sullivan able to fight back and a Dusty Rhodes elbow sends him into the corner. And now, wait a minute, Sullivan now trying to use all those things that I mentioned, spinning tornado DDT on the outside. And Sullivan trying to fight back here. Oh, right to the steel. He's trying to, but it's questionable just how much he is actually getting for that drop. And that wait a minute, wait a minute, concrete slam! Going for the cover. One, kick out by Sniper. Sniper was in the ropes there anyway, the ref should have seen that. Sullivan trying to collect himself, get himself focused, but Sniper is up. And wait a minute, Sidewinder! And, wait a minute, no, wait, wait, he's caught him, he's caught him, and, oh my god, one, two, kick out my soul. Sullivan able to create a little bit of distance with that arm breaker. And then attacking with the double hammer blow. Sullivan looks a little lost. Not quite sure exactly where he needs to go. Looked like he was trying to go from to the top rope, but was couldn't get couldn't there. get. Oh my God! Big brain buster. Short, sweet, and to the point. Dropping Sniper on his head, but Sniper clips the legs of Sullivan. And one one thing I will note note in this match. To your statement earlier, while MC Adams is at ringside, he is not actively trying to get involved in this match. And he is just staring down both Sniper and Shining Simon Sullivan. And wait a minute, Elvan Flatlatter again. Two, kick out. And Sniper, what the hell? Sniper's going up top. And look at the blood. Sullivan is just, oh my God, dropped down with that bionic elbow. Sullivan's rolling to the outside, covered in blood. And this assault continues. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute! Swatted down! DDT attempt! Swatted down! Sullivan trying to take control, but no! At, complete your thought there, Mr. Hammett. What were you saying? Well, I, I was going to say that I, I, my lack of information on Stuck, but uh, has he actually gone for his finisher? Yes, he has. Yes, he okay, has. I, I, He's connected with it once that, using that um, pump handle 
um, uh, reverse okay, STO. I, I you that maneuver. It's the headshot. Okay. And there it, it is. There it is. Cover. One, two, and three. And after a brutal beating. And Coleman, Coleman didn't get any face roll of it other than that kind of DDT off the side. He did not. He attempted to, but he was cut off. And, and that, that's what I was wondering because, I, like I said, I, I, the lack of, the lack of serious offense on Sullivan in that match is very tough. And Sniper, victorious. Collecting his first bounty, if you will, here in the World Wide Wrestling Network, and it was a big one. It was. And ladies and gentlemen, that is our show for this evening. Join us for Glow on Tuesday night and for Cyclone Saturday night at um at 8 o'clock on Saturday. Thank and you. Stay, and stay tuned. We will have a bonus glow match, not a part of that episode on Tuesday, uploaded very soon. Most likely on Thursday. Keep your notifications on, and that show will be, basically, that uh, match will be placed up as, essentially, raw footage. Like we said, it was recorded as a part of a taping it was, uh, there will not be commentary. It will just be a raw footage deal, and we will uh, show the match in its completion. Uh, that will most likely be on Thursday as a part of a special exclusive to the World Wide Wrestling Network. And with that, I am Remarkable Randall Reigns. He is Mr. Hamrick. Hit that notification bell and hit that subscribe button and join us 8 o'clock Mondays, Tuesdays, and Saturdays in as we progress through the stories of the World Wide Wrestling Network. And in the words of Ward Cyrus of Moldovia, stay safe and stay over.